Three very beautiful voices. And I was just impressed watching Mario sing, hold a hymn book, and play a guitar. How about that? I would invite you to turn in your Bibles tonight to Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. If you've got the right Bible, Matthew's the first book in the New Testament. <laughs> Matthew, this is apropos because we're going to be talking about praying for the new year. Prayers for the coming year, amen? <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of. Before ye ask the, him. Verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Now, of course, we're about to look at scripture that's often referred to as the Lord's Prayer. How interesting it is that we just read 
that this is not to be a repetitious prayer. And what has happened to this block of scripture? It's become a repetitious prayer. There are some people who can, <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you, there are many churches, many groups that get together, they call themselves church, that, that recite this block of scripture every time. I think we ought to pay attention to what the whole Bible says. I really would say that it would be better to refer to this as the Lord's direction in prayer. Amen? That's what, we're, that's what we have happening here. That's exactly what he says. After this manner, therefore pray ye. And now let's look at the Lord's direction for prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I heard there was this farmer who loved the Lord, got saved early in life, didn't have much education, didn't have much reading. And uh, one day he was asked to actually take the time to fill in for the Sunday school teacher. And uh, he, he couldn't read so well, but he, he knew what he believed the scripture said. And he, he was on this scripture right here, and he, he referred to say, Hollered be thy name. Amen? I like that. He said, if you love the Lord, you ought to holler it. Amen? Now you're going you're gonna to think that every time you read that, aren't you? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. That's the part we all like. As we forgive our debtors, that's the part we don't like. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Father, bless this time we have. Lord, even as we mentioned earlier today, Every day is Christmas. Every message is a message about you. And so even tonight, as we consider, should you tarry, how we might pray in this new year and pray through this year and pray now for the year to come, help us to see how many have prayed over the years. Let us take very seriously this, this important business of prayer. What a great undertaking, what a great work, what a great ministry, and what a great opportunity we have. We don't have to wait until we're on the other side of eternity to have this kind of one-on-one -on -one connection with you. Speak to hearts, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. And remember that fine verse, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, right? I think in Spanish this is two words, but in English it's three. Pray without ceasing. Amen? Somebody's going to look that up. Is it? Is it three in Spanish? Well, see, that just goes to show you that I don't know anything. <laughs> but it's true. Pray without I remember some, one time, this, this was a long, long time ago, I had... Someone actually asked me, how do you really do that? How do you, how do you pray without ceasing? I mean, do you, I mean, please don't bow your head and close your eyes when you're driving. Please don't do that. Please don't. But what does it mean to pray without ceasing? I, I mean, I'll tell you, are you ready for a really technical answer? Pray a lot. Right? Pray Pray, 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 and when you get a chance, pray. And when you think about it, you know what? Pray. <laughs> and uh, you ought to be in a prayer posture. You ought to, your, your, your default, your automatic for everything ought to be prayer. That was the worst finger snap I ever did in my life. Pray. The sad truth is we don't pray. Even sadder, too many in leadership don't pray. More sad than that, there are too many pastors who don't pray the way they ought. And the real truth is, 
Nobody ought to be satisfied with their prayer life, amen? <laughs> Nobody ought to be saying, you know what, I, <laughs> have I got a perfect prayer life or what? That, that, in fact, just can't be the case. If, in fact, that's where you're at, I, I'm, a little, I'm a little worried for you. I decided to do this, and I don't know how this is going to work out, but, you know, it's just us, so who cares? We'll do the best that we can. I decided to take a look at some scripture, some actually, well, we read scripture, but I also want to tie in hymnology tonight. Doesn't that sound highfalutin? Anything with knowledge in it scares me, so I'm going to do my best with this. But often, a lot of devotion time would be spent also reading over these wonderful hymns of the faith. Probably because these people were not folks that were out there just trying to make a living or win a Dove Award. Most of these hymns were born out of written prayers. And they became the finest poetry anyone could ever ask for. Don't forget, for the first 1,700 years, our hymn book was the psalmist. We read the psalms and we sang the psalms. And this new idea that we would actually, you know, put to paper our own thoughts was, was a pretty, you know, different kind of thing. But, you know, this is the way prayer ought to be. Prayer ought to matter enough, I think, that you maybe even ought to write it down, you know? Maybe we ought to go beyond even just a prayer list and actually write down what we want to say. Isn't it interesting how often when we are asked to speak, we write it down? When we're about to go before a group or speak to somebody significant, we, we, we think, well, we need to put our thoughts in order, amen? How many have ever prayed and you realized your thoughts weren't in order because by the second sentence you were asleep? You know, when we read through these wonderful hymns and when we consider the backstory, consider the people who wrote these hymns, you've just got to be moved. There's no doubt. We start out with, number one, let your lives sing a prayer of adoration and consecration. Let your lives Sing a prayer of adoration and consecration. I actually was even, I was, I was feeling really, um, what's the word? Mean. And I was just going to say, well, let's just, we'll, we'll call Daniel back up here and call Shanae back up here. And we'll just sing all of these hymns, not even prepare. But then I realized they would really not like me a lot. So we decided not to do that. But you know what else I think is important? We're, we're going to back up. As beautiful as the music is, aren't you thankful for great music? I am. As beautiful as the music is, we're going to back up and actually, are you ready? Are you ready? Look at the words. I mean, look at the words. My kids grew up thinking that a lot of hymns went like this. What a friend we have in Jesus. Da -de -da -de -da -de -da. Dad, no, that's not how it goes. And they'd fill in the words. So let's look at some of the words. What if Fanny Crosby would share this prayer with us tonight? So many of you know the story of Fanny Crosby. A doctor put solution in her eyes that caused her to be blind for the rest of her life. She gave up on life and just nobody else ever heard of her after that. That's not true. She wrote some 8,000 hymns. Okay, aren't you glad when you think, hey, you know, I just thought of a really good line and she wrote some 8,000 hymns. And many of them we love and sing and know. 
And you, and you think of it, don't you? Have you ever thought about Fanny Crosby when you're thinking, singing a Fanny Crosby hymn? I mean, you're thinking, this is a person who's physically blind. She could see at one time. But when she wrote these hymns, she couldn't see. Consider when she wrote these words, I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the prayer of grace divine, let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Now, you could spend a whole lot of time parked on those words, praying in agreement with what she has penned, and the refrain. <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually just read the refrain, but here it is. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Do you think it would be a good idea if we were to have lives that would sing a prayer of adoration and consecration? What do you think the Lord might be able to do with, with men and women sold out? How do you sell out to the Lord? How, do you, how are you sold out for the Lord? I guess that's the way you're supposed to put it. Adoration. Consecration. Considering all the attributes of God. It's, it's called worship. Worship, it's called considering his worth, amen? Adoring him. You know, if we'll spend more time adoring him and consecrating everything to him, we'll spend less time adoring this. I'm talking about the world and all that's in it. This is a good thing to talk about right after we open our presents and we didn't get what we thought we were going to get. That didn't happen to anybody in this group, I know. Amen? Nobody's working through that one. I know a grandson that was, but he, they worked that out. Can I tell you something? Adore the Lord. Pray that way. I, do you want to meet Fanny Crosby when you get to heaven? I do. Consecration. I believe that you ought to consecrate everything. You know? We, uh, we'll pray over anything, your tractor, your chicken, whatever, you know? I'll even pray over your iPhone. Wouldn't it be great if we did that more often? Maybe consecrated every single app to the Lord? Huh? Consecrated everything that we see? Secondly, notice... Let your lives sing a prayer regarding Bible study for the coming year. Amazingly, it's a year that has gone by, and I, I tw tweeted. I, I didn't tweet. That's, that's what Donald Trump does. <laughs> I text on our group. We have a group that pray and we also encourage people with this text group. And I, I served up a recommended prayer schedule for the year. And uh, for the first few weeks, I think I even kind of helped coach through it. It's real easy, isn't it? I mean, the one I like is one... New Testament chapter, one Old Testament chapter, a 
chapter in Psalms and a chapter in Proverbs? That's a pretty good plan. I'll tell you what, if you've got another plan, that's a good plan too, amen? The best plan, though, is to read the Bible. That's the best plan. All of us need to spend some time with God's word each day. I'm telling you, if you just made up your mind that you were going to just do this, read some Bible every day, the Lord will use that. I know that he will. There's no doubt about it. Here's a great hymn. Some of these hymns aren't hymns that I know so well, but I, as I read through the words... I'm more encouraged by the words than maybe I would ever be by singing the hymn. Every once in a while we sing a hymn that we don't know. You ever notice that? Have you noticed how we look when we sing a hymn we don't know? And have you noticed how the song leader looks? As the sweat starts coming down? Notice you can't see the piano player, but I can tell you how she looks too. Mary A. Lothbury. She wrote these words. Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. As thou didst break the loaves beside the sea. Beyond the sacred page I seek thee, Lord. My spirit pants for thee, O living word. Wow. Bless thou the truth, dear Lord, to me, to me. As thou didst bless the bread by Galilee, then shall all bondage cease, all fetters fall. And I shall find my peace, my all in all. O spend, oh, rather, O send thy spirit, Lord, now unto me, that he may touch my eyes and make me see. Show me the truth concealed within thy word, and in thy book revealed I see the Lord. What if we were just to read a poem like this before we open our Bible? How about that? What if we were to pray this prayer the next time we go to this book? I mean, first of all, let's, let's do what very few Christians do. Are you ready? Let's go to this book. Let's, let's be part of that group. You know, that crowd. And if you think that that's just the independent Baptist crowd, I can tell you, there, there are many very staunch King James folks that never open their Bible. I got to tell you, if we were to pray like this, just begin to imagine what the Lord might do. If we were to sing this kind of a prayer to the Lord, regarding studying the Word of God, regarding getting into the Word of God, be, regarding reading the Word of God. And I just got to tell you, I, I don't know, just kind of whatever leads me, I'll do when it comes to encouraging people in, in different ways. Just as, Oh, by the way, I just wanted to mention, when I said that uh, we started last year out recommending a, a prayer schedule, I mean a Bible reading schedule, it was pretty special when, when Brenda, Aaron, texted me and let me know that she had completed her Bible reading schedule. Amen? I got to tell you something. That's a big victory. That's a big hallelujah. That right there shows me commitment. It says to me, you know what? I'm just going to do the best that I can with this. I'm actually going to commit to do something and stick with it. You can't go wrong with reading your word. You can't go wrong with getting this Bible open. 
And you and I both know that it's not easy. It's not. We can find ourselves, again, so distracted with so many other things that actually... And, and you know what? Can I just tell you something? I, I consider myself an average tech Greek geek. <laughs> I would take Greek, okay? That's better. I, I mean, I, I like my, I like my, you know, now we have like two or three tablets. We have, you know, our smartphone and we have our computer. You know, I still love the smell of this book, don't you? I still love to turn these pages. And if you can't see this one, you need a new Bible, amen? I'm telling you, I still think it's special. Hey, look. No Wi-Fi needed. Are you ready? No batteries needed. You may need, for some of us, you may need some magnification, but you can get the biggest print there is out there. Amen? Some of you can read this from, the, from where you're sitting, can't you? William used to make fun of my big Bible. He's starting to appreciate it now. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read. Read your Bible. Thirdly, let our lives sing a prayer for spiritual illumination. Only God can open our eyes and help us see spiritual reality. Clara H. Scott, you can write these names down, check them out, see if they really exist. She wrote a prayer to God specific to this point. You know, I, I love the cadence of many of these hymns. Sometimes I get tripped up just a little bit. I marvel at the ability of the poet to put thought to paper. I think we're missing a lot of this today. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth thou sendest clear and while the wave notes fall on my ear everything false will disappear how about that the refrain silently now I wait for thee ready my God thy will to see Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit Divine. Now, at least a hundred or so years ago, somebody can look this up and see when she actually penned these words. This Christian understood the importance of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The importance of allowing the Holy Spirit to Open our eyes. We preach a lot more on the Holy Spirit than maybe a lot of folks do. Maybe it's because there's so much, so much noise out there, so much white noise that isn't true. We think that it's important that we preach really what the ministry of the Holy Spirit is. And I can tell you this, you cannot separate, you've heard me say this, truth from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit illuminates. My brother, he was the smart one. We're a year and 11 months apart. He's the oldest. He got straight A's. My parents were glad that I actually showed up for school. They were happy that, you know, I don't have any issues with that. It's been like 100 years since we were in school, but... 
I remember when, just for fun, I think we were, I think I was 11, he was 13. He read through the Bible three times. And he bragged about it and didn't get a thing out of it. He wasn't saved at the time. And I thought about how you could even read this book. But you and I both know that first and foremost, you need to be letting this book draw you to the Lord. Trust the Lord and now let the Holy Spirit open your eyes. You can, you can, be, you can be capable of reading. I, you know, I, I didn't read through the Bible three times. At least back then for sure. But I can tell you this, I've learned over the years how important it is to allow the Holy Spirit. Just as this poet reminds us, that's the way we ought to pray. Let's pray that way. Notice, let your, let your lives sing a prayer of the master teacher regarding prayer. Just as we mentioned a moment ago, our Lord's disciples requested not that he teach them how to preach or how to teach, but how to pray. You want to know what you need to learn how to do before you preach and before you teach? You better be taught how to pray. And here, here he demonstrates for them a template, a, a, a model to follow when it comes to prayer. Albert Ritz wrote this poem. We'll call it a poem before it ever becomes a hymn. Teach me to pray, Lord. Teach me to pray. This is my heart cry unto today. I long to know thy will and thy way. I, I want you to stop and consider. You and I know we can say these words. We can... We can sing this hymn and not mean it. You know, I just really believe we probably don't know how dangerous that really is. You know, I heard a preacher say this a long time ago, and I usually just say, I refer to him saying it. That way when I say it, I can get away with it. If you don't believe what you're singing, shut your mouth. I long to know thy will and thy way. Teach me to pray. Lord, teach me to pray. Power in prayer, Lord. Power in prayer. Here, mid earth's sin and sorrow and care, mid lost and dying souls in despair, Oh, give me power, power in prayer. My weakened will, Lord, thou canst renew. My sinful nature thou canst subdue. Fill me just now with power anew. Power to pray and power to do. Living in thee, Lord, and thou in me, canst abiding, constant rather, abiding, this is my plea, grant me thy power, boundless and free, power with men and power with thee. You know, when we talk about singing these hymns and we talk about the importance of paying attention, maybe tonight for some of us, these are hymns that we have sung and we've never quite taken the time to pay the attention. I can't help but think of when Daniel sang special music the other night. And he sang a cappella and he sang from memory. 
two things I'm absolutely forbid to do. <laughs> Not that I can't sing a cappella, it's that you don't want me to, and that I'm too old to remember all that he can remember. But I thought about how much more this hymn must mean to him. And that's why it meant so much more to us, didn't it? Finally tonight, let's notice, let your lives sing a prayer of commitment to personal witnessing. Yep, here we go again. Amen. Lincoln Tucker, T-U-C-K-E-R, Leon Tucker, rather, excuse me, prayed the first stanza of the prayer that we're about to read, and I believe we should pray, asking the Lord to lay on us a new and deeper concern for the souls of the lost about us. With all sincerity, let's, let's do this. Let's pray this way. You say, you know, Pastor, you annoy me just a little bit because you talk about soul winning a lot and you talk about the importance of sharing the gospel. And, and you know what? I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm going to keep doing it. Amen? That's the way it's going to be. Because, you know, I know what will happen to me and what will happen to you if somehow today or tomorrow, now today's almost gone, and most of us have been home with family, but if we get a chance to tell somebody about the Lord, to point somebody to the Lord, I just got to tell you, that's a pretty good reason for waking up tomorrow, isn't it? Let's look at this great prayer. Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me that I may bravely do my part to win that soul for thee. Lord, lead me to some soul in sin and grant that I may be endued with power and love to win that soul, dear Lord, for thee. To win that soul for thee alone will be my constant prayer that when I've reached the great white throne, I will meet that dear one there. Some soul for thee, some soul for thee, this is my earnest plea. Help me each day on life's highway to win some soul for thee. I have a few more that I am going to leave to you to pray. But I can tell you something. If you don't think there's anything to pray for, you haven't spent any time in the word of God for sure, and you, and you haven't taken a look at saints that have gone before us and been encouraged by what they prayed for. I want to just bring out these points. We won't have time to read all the way through these hymns, but this is another great prayer to pray. Let's sing the prayer of personal commitment to our Savior as we face the coming year. Let's also... Let's let our lives sing a song of, of faith for the new year. I should have probably written if we have, I don't even know if we have all of these hymns in our hymn book, but you know, you can do the research and you can find these hymns. I also have the notes for the hymns that I was thinking of when I thought of those last couple of points. But I'll tell you what I really want the focus to be on I want us to pray. I, I, I got to tell you, it, it would be wonderful if somebody were to say, you know, I don't know a whole lot about Maranatha Baptist Church but, Church, but I'll tell you this, those people pray. They're, they're, they're serious about this praying business. They believe in prayer. 
And you know what? For you and I, wouldn't it be wonderful if someone were to say, and let's hope that it's not our eulogy, but if in fact it were, wouldn't it be great to hear someone say, you, you can hear them from glory, I guess. This man, this woman, they were, they were busy about the business of prayer. Father, we do thank you for tonight. Thank you for the opportunity just to, to stop and still ourselves and quiet ourselves and, and consider how so many before us, so many dear saints who went on to be used in, in wonderful ways as far as their musical ability was concerned, as far as their ministry was concerned, they showed us and taught us so much about how to pray by the very words that they would pin. Lord, help us. Maybe one of us might be able to pin some of these kinds of words today. But most importantly, Lord, let us, let us be serious and let us continue and let us even recommit ourselves to pray. And yes, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.